The king has finally made his return. The king is back. The king is ready to save our chicks. Who's this king? Well, it's Duke Nukem, of course. Who else? Okay, so maybe you don't know why there's so much hype for a game that so far has received pretty bad reviews. Let's clear all this up and give you the history of the so-called king, Duke Nukem. Before Gearbox and before 3D Realms, there was Apogee Software. Apogee Software was founded by a young programmer named Scott Miller and his friend George Bessard in 1987 with their business model of shareware. Demo first, then money for the rest of the game. And this helped fund the company. Their first major game title with his business model of shareware? Kingdom of Craws. Other than helping publish some other major Catalyst games for other companies, such as Commander Keen for id Software, Apogee was also developing games of their own, such as Supernova, Crystal Caves, and of course, Duke Nukem. Why Nukem? Well, at the time, Captain Planet had their own pollution punk aptly named Duke Nukem, ending with EM. But that's only where the similarities lie. The Duke we're talking about is inspired from 90s comics, so we're getting a dude that's full of attitude. So what's the story of the game? Well, in the year 1997, Dr. Proton is determined to take over the world with his army of tech bots, but Duke is ready to stop him. Duke's first game was actually pretty good. As Duke, you were running and gunning, collecting footballs and balloons. Well, other than that, this game was financially successful for Apogee. Writing the success of the first one came the equally great Duke Nukem 2 in 1993. Duke was back to his Macho Man shenanigans, shooting up the alien Regelidans and saving the Earth again. Also, this was the first time Duke actually uttered something. I am back. No, it's not the voice we know, but it's the start of the attitude that was fleshed out for the character. All in all, Duke 2 was one of the best side-scrollers around at the time, but its reception was overshadowed by something greater, and with a little more depth. Yes, Wolfenstein. An id game which was only released sometime before Duke 2 literally changed people's perception on how games should be played. With the mass appeal of Wolfenstein, id Software decided to start publishing their own games, following Wolfenstein with a little game called... Doom. Now with id publishing their own games, how is Apogee supposed to strive? Well, why not compete in the same genre? Apogee's first game, which was a very heavily modified version of Wolfenstein, was Rise of the Triad, and it was received quite well. Noticing the trend of the emergence of 3D gaming, Apogee decided to create a separate branch for publishing 3D games. Thus, 3D Realms comes to life. Their second game was The Return of Duke in Duke Nukem 3D, which was released in 1996, and not only did it sell well, but it was the biggest success in Apogee's history. The story? Well, uh, aliens are attacking, um, and uh, you have to stop them. But you're not just another Marine. You're the beef-headed, wise-cracking, woman-loving, take-no-prisoners Duke Nukem, who is given the personality through the voice of John St. John. Hail to the king, baby. Duke Nukem 3D oozed personality, humor, and was full of interactivity, which made Doom pale in comparison. Not only did it receive good scores in the gaming industry, but it riled up the public because of the controversial themes of pornography and violence. So what now? If Duke 3D sold so well, why not make a sequel? Well, that's exactly what 3D Realms decided to announce in 1997. Duke would quote-unquote return in 1998. The first sighting of Duke's return was in the form of the trailer for his newest game, Duke Nukem Forever, and it showed off the power of the game on the Quake 2 engine in 1998. But later, the team decided to switch to the newly developed Unreal Engine, which cost months of wasted time. But 3D Realms assured the people that they are working as hard as they can. Nothing concrete came up until 2001 at E3, where another trailer was released showing the new game engine. And at the time, it was the talk of the show, but still no solid release date. During the development, changes were made due to finances. 3D Realms was downsized and absorbed in a Take 2 Interactive. Also, the team working on Duke was reduced to 18, and yet there was still no real sense of a finished product in sight. New info about Duke came in 2004, when it was reported as a rumor that the game now switched to the Doom 3 engine, and they were also implementing a new physics engine. Next, in 2006, when team leader Broussard reported in an interview that Duke Nukem, at its core, 
was finished, and the team was now pulling everything together. Take-Two even pushed the game's development by offering a bonus to the team if Duke Nukem was released by December 31st, 2006. But still, nothing. Finally, 2007 arrived, and what did we get? The first teaser in more than six frickin' years. But still, no solid release date. What did we get? A good when it's done. Afterwards, in 2008, camcorder gameplay footage was released by the Jace Hall Show, but still there was no new news about anything. Nothing new was announced until 2009, because of the development being suspended. There was a lack of funding from Take Two, and with that, 3D Realms had to lay off the Duke Nukem Forever team. At this time, the fate of Duke was in the air. Did the once long in development game just become vaporware? The only news that was Duke Nukem Forever related was the court hearing between Take Two and Apogee, and then later in 2009 with unofficial gameplay footage from a halted project. Until 2010. At the Penny Arcade Expo, Gearbox, who began helping the last of the 3D Realms development team, re-announced that Duke Nukem was coming out. Did you think I was gone forever? It was even playable on the floor, which was a monumentous occasion to all gamers around the globe. Later that year, Gearbox confirmed that Duke Nukem was almost complete and would definitely be released in 2011. Then 2011 came and Duke Nukem was set to arrive on May 3rd and 6th worldwide. But then, it was delayed again. Until June 14th, so it wasn't that bad. Finally, after 15 years of development hell, Duke finally returned. Those who once counted on him 15 years ago, finally were able to play something that they have waited for for a long time. But was it good? Well, I'm only here to tell you the history. You come up with your own conclusions. Now, I know Duke Nukem games did emerge amidst the development of Duke Nukem Forever, but since those were licensed to other developers, those were never true sequels. Forever is the embodiment of a development team that wanted their game to be everything, and sometimes everything isn't really a good thing. Either way, Duke is an icon that stayed through not only the passion of the developers, but also the gamers. And heck, we might get a new Duke game at least before 2030. I hope I didn't jinx it.